We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This is part one of building your Afford a plane. In this first part, we don't need any aluminum materials to get started. We want to talk about getting your work area ready with your workbench and then laying out on the workbench the template that you're going to use to actually form the fuselage and hook it all together. It's going to be a full size drawing on a very large table. No big deal, pretty easy to do. In fact, we're going to start out with how you come up very easily and quickly with a large 16 foot table because not everybody has that. And yes, you don't need me to tell you how to build a workbench, but for those of you who actually need a little help with that, I'm going to show you one of the easiest ways ever just with three components to build a perfectly flat 16 foot table, one that you can take apart when you're all done. And the parts are available locally. It won't take much time because we should be building airplanes, not workbenches. So all you need for this exercise is a copy of the plans, either electronically or on hard copy. And we will now get started with part one, building your afford plane one of the items you need to have is a four foot by 16 foot flat table or surface to work on. Now this might seem challenging at first and a lot of work and a lot of lumber but it's not. Let me show you how to build it quick and easy and inexpensively with just three components. You're looking at all three right here. The first component is a set of sawhorses. I'm using metal ones, nice and sturdy. The second component is a set of 16 foot wooden I-beams. These are floor joists. Any home builder can get these for you. Tell them you want them 16 feet long and the height doesn't really matter. I believe mine are about 10 inches high. These actually cost me less than the plywood which is our last item. Use some C-clamps to affix the joists to the sawhorses and that will make things a little more rigid so they won't wobble. And you can decide how far apart they should be located for good stability. Our last component is a set of 4x8 sheets of plywood. I'm using 3 quarter inch here, kind of nice one side and not so nice on the other side to keep costs down and we're simply going to place these end to end and butt them up against each other. Keep in mind that this table assembles so quickly and will disassemble just as quickly too. That's a real nice feature. I did add screws through the top into the tops of the I-beams and that kept everything securely in place and made it a little less wobbly. Another huge bonus is to simply add a shelf on the bottom between the two I-beams and you can keep your tools and parts there and there's no reason you can't store your long metal tubes and angles and channels in that area too if you put enough shelves along the way. You have 16 feet of storage space. When all is said and done this type of workbench meets our needs. It is inexpensive, it goes together really fast and takes apart really fast and is easy to store out of the way. You're going to reuse your sawhorses and your plywood anyhow but we do need the full 16 feet flat nice and flat surface 
because we're going to lay out and assemble our fuselage on this table and we need the full space to do that. So now we can move on forward to our next step. We need to be able to sketch on our table so unless we want to draw directly on the table surface we need some craft paper to cover the tabletop to be able to draw. Ideally 48 inches wide which you can get from Amazon. I only had 24 inches wide so I taped it together down the middle of the seam until I got my full 16 foot long by 48 inch wide paper. And so our goal is to be able to unroll it and cover the tabletop in its entirety and this will allow us to sketch our patterns right on the top of the table and if we make mistakes we can simply throw the paper out and start again but it also allows us to remove the paper, unroll it, so we can use the table for other things. Another option instead of paper is to draw on this high density foam board that is used in construction. It comes in 4x8 sheets of various thicknesses. So you would take two of these sheets and lay them on top of your table. They would be joined together in the middle to make a continuous 16 foot span to draw on. But the reason we bring this up is that if you think about it, this could be laid on the floor. If you did not have or want a 16 foot workbench, but you had a nice flat floor, you could put two of these boards together and use that as your drawing surface for your template. Just another idea. Now the most important step here. We are going to draw on top of the table the fuselage layout full size simply using a sharpie or a pencil and a whole bunch of straight edges. We're going to use our guides in the plans that have all the dimensions and get those measurements and reproduce them on your table. Now while this is something you simply have to do for yourself and take your time, we can give a few pointers and a few tips to possibly make things easier. An extremely useful tool is a large T-square available from any home improvement store. These are typically used for laying out drywall, but for us it can provide that same usefulness, the ability to keep a nice 90 degree angle as we take measurements and relay them onto our paper. The other benefit is that if you get one that is two inches wide, which is pretty typical, you have the perfect dimension for your square tubing. So as you draw lines to outline the square tubing, you simply use the ruler to create the boundaries of where those square tubes are going to go. Our goal, of course, was to transfer this drawing from the plans onto our full-size table 4 by 16. Now we began by drawing a horizontal line here about one inch up from the bottom of the table and then followed that up with a vertical line here at the datum location. From these two lines we were able to measure and draw the rest of the locations. We located the corners first and then filled them in with the two inch or one inch widths which would locate where the actual square tubes would be located. You want to take your time in laying out the drawing. Make sure you use long pieces of aluminum channel or angle to help you draw these very long lines nice and straight. Since there were two of us and we were trying to not
duplicate our efforts, we each wanted our own set of drawings, so we drew it first on paper and then marked all of the endpoints with push pins, rolled the paper up, and underneath was our pink insulation with the little holes left by the push, push pins, and those could easily be connected with lines, leaving an identical copy of our drawing underneath. So we each had our own drawing made or created one time. So by the end of step one, you should have a table top that looks something like this. And from here, we can then move on to step two. And there we have it for part one. In our next part, we're going to start fabricating our components. So if you want to start procuring material, the one piece of metal we need for our next part in the series is your eighth inch aluminum plate. This is 6061T6. This is in the plans. And we need a minimum of square feet and more typically more than that especially if you make cutting mistakes like I do. But with this material, we can start making the gussets which are going to be required for the fuselage. So if you're buying your material piece by piece, the next step is to get your aluminum plate, the 1 8 inch or 0 0.125, 6061T6. Until next time, back to building.